welcome to 13th lecture in mechanics of materials. The last lecture we saw how to compute the change in length by original length for a line element oriented along a direction A. We saw that the expression for finding the change in length along a direction A is given by this expression where epsilon is the linearized strain or it is one half of gradient of u plus gradient of u transpose. Okay. So, if you take the strain tensor or the linearized strain tensor as one half of the gradient of u plus gradient of u transpose that tensor multiplied by the direction along which you want to find the change in length by original length and dotted with the same direction will give you the change in length by original length. Similarly, the change in angle between two line elements A and B is given by this expression in here which is 2 times epsilon A dotted with B by sign of the angle between A and B which is cos inverse of A dotted with B okay, where A and B are unit vectors. Okay. Now, we will address a question on how to experimentally find the strain tensor. Okay. Now, we cannot measure changes in angle directly using an instrument and hence we have to infer the change in angle also by measuring changes in length along three different directions. Okay. For this you have to use what is called as a transformation of strain concept or the Mohr circle for strains to understand how to compute the strain especially the strain component epsilon x y because you cannot measure the changes in angle directly. Okay. Towards that we will look at transformation of strains first. Okay. In the last class we saw that if you write strain as 1 half gradient of u plus gradient of u transpose it is a second order tensor and we saw that how in the previous lectures how a second order tensor will transform when we looked at the stress tensor. So, since strain is also a second order tensor it will transform similarly. So, if I write strain in one coordinate system and want to compute the strain tensor in the start coordinate system. If you want to compute the strain tensor in the start coordinate system, this will be what we saw before as Q transpose epsilon Q. Okay, where Q i j we define it as E j star dotted with E i. Okay, so basically from that we saw the strain also will transform in a similar manner like the stress transforms. So whatever equations we add for the plane stress transformations will hold for plane strain transformations also. In particular these expressions that we got for sigma x star x star will hold for epsilon x star x star also plus epsilon y y by 2 plus epsilon x x minus epsilon y y by 2 cos 2 theta plus epsilon x y sin of 2 theta and epsilon y star y star would be epsilon x x plus epsilon y y by 2 minus x x minus epsilon y y by 2 cos of 2 theta minus epsilon x y sin of 2 theta and epsilon x star y star would be given by epsilon x x minus epsilon y y by 2 with a negative sign sin of 2 theta plus epsilon x y cos of 2 theta. Okay. So, these are the most circular equation that we obtained for the stress transformation the same equations holds here. However, if I were to replace epsilon x y by the change in angle between x and y which is related to epsilon x y as comma x y was twice epsilon x y like what we saw in the last class then what happens is here it will become gamma x y 
by 2 and here this will be gamma x y by 2 and here also it will be gamma x y by 2. In that case we saw that gamma x y if you write in the strain in terms of gamma x y is no longer a second order tensor and then the transformation rules differ by a 2 there ok. So, this is what this is why it is important to treat the strain also as a second order tensor. So, that you can use the same transformations like in the Mohr circle for stresses you can use the same expressions for the Mohr circle of the strains ok. Now, Let us see how uh, electrical strain gauge functions. This is a schematic of this is a schematic of this is a schematic of electrical strain gauge ok. What it measures is the change in resistance you know that the resistance is proportional to the length of the member ok. So, when the length changes the resistance will change and hence it will cause uh, that change in resistance is what you measure as a change in the balance in the Wheatstone bridge network ok. So, basically now this is an example of a real electrical strain gauge ok. So, what you see there is essentially this small thing which is there it is a roughly 5 mm in gauge length ok. This length is essentially 5 mm this red dimension is essentially 5 mm which is the gauge length of this electrical strain gauge ok. Now, what you measure is the change in length along this direction that is the strain direction that is where the windings of the metallic wire are there ok that is where the resistance wires are the gauge resistance wires are there and you measure how much change in length does this gauge resistance wires have ok. So, what you measure is the this quantity epsilon a that is epsilon a dotted with a is what you measure ok. Now, having measured this around 3 different directions you can get the 3 components of the strain tensor that is what you do is you measure you put 3 of these together you measure 3 and if I take E x and E y as my coordinate system and say this makes an angle theta 1 with the x this makes an angle theta 2 with the x and this forms an angle theta 3 with respect to the x axis. Then what I want to do is find this with respect to those 3 orientations ok. In other words if I had to find epsilon x star x star 1 which is for this theta 1 direction it will be epsilon x x cos square theta 1 plus epsilon y y sin square theta 1 plus epsilon x y sin 2 theta 1. What I have done is the previous expression I have combined again the previous expression I have combined 1 plus cos 2 theta by 2 as cos square theta 1 ok. I combine 1 minus cos 2 theta by 2 as sin square theta 1 ok that is what I have done here because that will yield me a equation which is convenient to handle ok. So, this is epsilon x x star 1 which is nothing but the strain measured along the strain measured along this is epsilon x x star 1. Then similarly let us say this epsilon 1, epsilon 2 is the strain measured along this direction this epsilon x x star 2 which is epsilon 2 that will be 
epsilon x x cos square theta 2 plus epsilon y y sin square theta 2 plus epsilon x y sin 2 theta 2. Okay. Similarly, for the third direction we will have epsilon 3 as epsilon x x cos square theta 3 plus epsilon y y sin square theta 3 plus epsilon x y sin 2 theta 3. Okay. Now, this is three equations in terms of three unknowns so, so epsilon x x y y and epsilon x y which you can solve to get epsilon 2 epsilon 3 is equal to I have cos square theta 1 sin square theta 1 sin 2 theta 1 cos square theta 2 sin square theta 2 sin 2 theta 2 cos square theta 3 sin square theta 3 sin 2 theta 3 times epsilon x x epsilon y y epsilon x y here I do not know this this is known this is unknown I invert this matrix and I can find the unknowns in terms of the known vector. Okay. So, this is how you measure epsilon x y. Okay. There are different strain Rossettis, this is called as a strain Rossetti, it is called as strain Rossetti. Okay. There are different kinds of strain Rossettis, one which makes an angle 45 degrees. where this angle is 45 degrees and this angle is also 45 degrees. This is called as 45 degree strain Rossetti. Okay. Similarly, there is a 60 angle strain Rossetti wherein now the angle between the strain gauges is 60 degrees. Now, this is 60 degrees and this also 60 degrees. Okay. This is called as a 60 degree strain Rossetti. Typically, what will happen is in real life this branch, this branch would be drawn here and it will be like a equilateral triangle. This branch would be translated here. and it will be like an equilateral triangle. Okay. So, that is how a real Rossetti will look like and this Rossetti is supposed to measure the strain at the CG of this triangle, equilateral triangle. So, the strain is at this point, the measurement point is that point. Okay. So, what you do is you measure changes in length and from the changes in length you measure the changes in angle and if you are going to follow this procedure to compute the strain, you will use what is called as a strain Rossetti to compute the in plane strain components. Okay.